All right, Harry, going to keep the good information coming over here. We got all the culprits here curling irons, mascara, facial cream. We use them as part of our daily beauty routine, but every once in a while, we suffer a painful beauty blunder. Put too much cream on your face, and I broke out in a rash and had to take some Benadryl. I turned out to be allergic to the cream. It's really hard to bring yourself with a flat iron, but um, I was like doing the front part, and uh, the welcome was longer, and I kind of just miss. Interpreted the angle and it just kind of was like, shh, and it was this big, like, scab for a while. I have a couple scars there from the nair. <laughs> so the hair was gone, but so was my skin. <laughs> oh no. Joining us now is Dr. Macrina Alexiadis Armanakis, a dermatologist who sees these kinds of blunders all the time. Good morning. Good morning, Megan. Nice to be here. Nice to have you. You say these are the most common culprits of skin infections. What are they? Beauty products and treatments can cause bad reactions to the skin. Two common types of bad reactions include allergic reactions and irritant type reactions. Allergic reactions occur when you develop a sensitivity to an ingredient in a beauty product, mm -hmm. even if you've been using it for a while. Oh, it can still happen. It can still happen later on. And it is typically associated with redness, flaking, and itching. Mm -hmm. Whereas irritant type reactions are typically associated with burning symptoms. Okay. Irrit irritations are typically due to overuse of products, such as overuse of exfoliation, um, which not only removes the dead skin layer, but then harms the healthy skin layer underneath, right. or overuse of too many products which don't agree with each other or don't agree with the skin. All right, so if you have a bad reaction, what are some of the remedies? Okay, if you're at home and you have a bad skin reaction, cleanse the skin with lukewarm water and a non-soap gentle cleanser. Afterwards, pat dry and apply hydrocortisone over the counter cream two to three times per day. So we should all have this at home. Yes, and it will take several days or up to two weeks for this reaction to calm down. And it's very important to not use any of the beauty products or treatments that you've been using. Okay, and what about this? Is this just to cover up the... As a the rash? Correct. As a quick fix, if you have an important event, things that mask the redness would be a redness relieving lotion mm -hmm. or a mineral containing powder. Zinc and titanium are particularly good at reflecting the light, thereby masking redness as well as soothing the skin. And these are all the rage right now, these mineral cosmetics. Indeed. All right. We've all been there. The curling iron, ouch. Yes. And, and immediately, should you put some ice on it? Indeed. We see this very commonly. If it is a first degree burn, which means it's red and it's flat, what you want to do is immediately apply ice. This will potentially prevent blistering. And you want to continue to apply the ice until the pain and the burning symptoms subside, which could take minutes or up to an hour. Afterwards, it's important to apply a healing ointment. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a silver containing ointment at home, Aquaphor healing ointment is good, or good old aloe vera gel. All right. As and we could also cover with makeup. I know Dermablend is super ultra coverage. Right. In fact, Dermablend was developed for these kinds of se severe sorts of situations. So if you have an important event and really need effective mm -hmm. cover-up, Dermablend or a, a light liquid foundation would be a good alternative. Okay. You poke your eye while putting on mascara. What do you do? Well, the fear here is that you've caused a corneal scratch or abrasion, which is very painful. Immediately what you want to do is rinse the eye with cool water and always position the head against the running stream of water away mm. from the tear duct. Afterwards, mm. if you do have an ophthalmic ointment at home, you can apply that. And importantly, if it still hurts, apply an eye patch, either gauze with paper tape or an eye patch itself. This will minimize the discomfort. Great, great tips. All right, manicures. A lot of people get nail infections, right? Yes. Unfortunately, this is also quite common. Yellow discoloration of the nail indicates a fungal infection. Blue-green discoloration of the nail indicates a bacterial oh, infection. Oh, that's such good info. Yellow is a fungus and black is bacteria. Blue-green is bacterial. Blue -green. And in both cases, the nail will separate from the nail bed. In the case of a fungal infection, the nail will become thick and crumbly. What you want to do here is clip the nail back as far as you can without hurting yourself. And then a good home remedy is to apply a capful of white vinegar in a basin of lukewarm water, soak the nail in for 20 minutes three times a day, and then follow this with the application of an over the counter chlorotrimazole cream, which is an antifungal cream, like a solution, cream, right? Correct. Okay. And importantly, 
these types of infections can occur in the setting of too much wet work. Mm -hmm. Women washing dishes yep. and clothes without gloves. So while you're healing the nail, it's important to avoid wet work. And so wear the Playtex gloves anytime you're doing any of the above. And you know what I do? I bring my own tools to get a manicure so you're not sharing them. Indeed. Very yeah. important because okay. you don't, you're never sure about the sterilization techniques that they use. So true. Thank you, doctor. Great Thank stuff. Thank you so much for having Where are my guys? We're over here. Yes, we're talking Boring. about makeup tips, but now we have to talk football. Ah, to, to redeem ourselves. Because <laughs> the, the big story, of course, yesterday was Brett.